let's move to our second topic of conversation. Uh, I want to talk about Josh Hawley because I hadn't heard of this cat until um, until January 6th when the whole insurrection event happened. Uh, so Josh Hawley is a Republican congressperson. I'm blanking on whether he's a senator or a representative. If you if you know if Hawley is if a senator or a representative, leave a comment because I can't remember right now. But he's but he's a congressperson. I'll I'll I'll, I'll use I'll use that uh, descriptor for him. Uh, he beat Claire McCaskill by a hundred thousand votes. Who is Claire McCaskill? Uh, Claire McCaskill is the MSNBC neoliberal that went on MSNBC several different times uh, to shit on Bernie, to to shit on anybody that supported Bernie. as a Bernie bro, you know, that uh, it, it's, it's, you know, the same type of people that, whatever I point out, that, uh, you know, they're, they're members of Biden's ca- cabinet that are just a bunch of neoliberal war hawks uh, that, that use the term Medicare to just mean access to health care. And they're and they're like fucking over progressive ideologies. Uh, they, they call me a brochialist. Lunatics. These are people again. It's the deification of of your of your elected officials of of any sort of person that's in a position of power or leadership. They these people deify them and worship them, um, not being able to see. Uh, when they're being duped, or when when the, when this person is actually doing something harmful uh, and destructive. Anyway, Claire McCaskill is is one of those neoliberals that she that she attacked Bernie and Bernie supporters. Uh, said Bernie has no friends. He's got no friends in Congress. You guys, oh man, he's got no. What about Joe Biden? He keeps saying Joe Biden is his best friend. He's like my friend Joe Biden all the time. That's what he does. Let me tell you something, my friend Joe Biden. got to be able to hold your leader's feet to the fire if you can't do that then then you don't we don't live in a real democracy uh we're walking ourselves into a a different version of authoritarianism um claire mccaskill also said uh boy bernie's just an angry guy he's so angry he's yelling about all these people that lose their health care and then they die why do you have to be so angry about all these people dying can't you just be chill Bernie, and let people die that's claire mccaskill uh nobody tell her about joe biden <laughs> because every time you talk to joe biden about his record uh or his men- deteriorating brain condition uh and dementia he just yells at you and but that's not nope you're not supposed to talk about that don't bring why would you bring that up that's always what I get from why would you bring that up Chris what the fuck do you want Trump to win well Trump's lost now can we talk about how angry fucking Joe Biden is uh, over nothing like at least Bernie Sanders has a fucking real cause that he's pissed off about like people are losing health care they're going into medical debt. We're the only fucking country that has that, and a bunch of people are dying because of it. That's a very legitimate reason to get mad. Joe Biden is like, hey, Joe, it seems like you're not all there mentally. You want to take a test to make sure? And then he yells at you and, and says black people are less diverse than Mexicans. Remember when that happened? Okay, good. Uh, back to Josh Hawley. So Josh Hawley beat Claire McCaskill. One of the things that, that uh, got McCaskill beaten in in uh, uh, the uh, the race there is she kind of portrayed him as as a country bumpkin you know this farm boy this rural hick that you know who cares he can't he's not smart because he's from a farm I'd like to see Claire McCaskill grow corn for 350 million people I'd like to see her grow some wheat. I'd like to see her grow anything, like a backbone. Uh, you know, to push back against <laughs> the, the, the neoliberalism uh, that is fucking over the people that you would have represented had you won. Um, 
But this is, I mean, this is liberal elitism, right? That's that's what Claire McCaskill wound up representing. In middle America, that's what she ended up representing. To the working class, that's what she ended up representing. It's just liberal el- elitism. And this is part of the reason why I think people don't like intellectualism in, in America. They have a problem with intellectualism in America. Because if you come off smart, it, com- it, it, it seems like you're talking down to people. And that's what they do. A, a, a lot of liberals do. I mean, I get the same thing, too, is, is when I point out shit from, oh, that's just a straw man. You wouldn't understand because you're not smart enough to understand what a straw man argument is. No, I do. I'm, I'm, this isn't a straw man. This is a fact about this individual's record and the way that they carry them. And you can see it here. And they're like, uh, 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 uh. that video is a fallacy. What? shit like that and, the, and it's like oh you wouldn't understand you don't get it because you're crazy because you don't love the same candidate I do so you must be nuts that's the vitriol that I get from liberals but that's what Claire McCaskill does too is, is when you portray your opponent when you portray anybody that, that isn't the same as you as someone less than someone not as smart some kind of fucking country bumpkin that you know these fucking these fucking trade jobs are are considered to be less smart less intellectually capable is all bullshit dude i don't know anything about elect, elect be you know being an electrician or or fixing a fucking furnace or pipes in my house. Like, I don't fucking know that shit. I know history and design principles and philosophy and nerd shit. But to just come out and attack people because they are different and to look at people in trades and look down on them. I mean, that again, that's part of the reason why intellectualism is looked down upon. Claire McCaskill lost to Josh Hawley. Now, Josh Hawley, this person that Claire McCaskill lost to, is a is a, uh, a vehement Trump supporter and one of the people that was, uh, even after everything was said and done, uh, someone that, um, you know, fucking was calling for the insurrection and, and saying that, you know, Joe Biden didn't win the election and the electoral pro- electoral college process is all bunk and bullshit and blah blah blah. Uh, which look, the, the, without a doubt, the American uh, electoral system um, is filled with fraud, just not the way that they're calling it. In fact, if you want to sit there and say that there was fraud in the general elections, it was done by Republicans to throw uh, to throw communities of color off the voter rolls. Because of change of addresses, because of signature discrepancies, you name it. And some people didn't even get their ballots because the Postal Service has been gutted by a bipartisan bill. Democrats and Republicans are are responsible for that. And I will keep reminding you people of that until it sinks in. Did a whole show about the post office and how it's been gutted. whole show about it but no I mean that's you know that's the reality is is that there is fraud there is election chicanery just not in the way that these fucking insurrectionists thought of it that's not the way that Trump and and and, and Josh Hawley and Ted Cruz or any of those people said it was in the general election it's always almost always the fucking Republicans that caused the problem. Almost always. So it's like, really? Are you guys just throwing yourselves down the fucking river? Is that, is that the fucking plan here? <laughs> is the Republican Party is like, we're cannibalizing ourselves. Election fraud. Joe Biden can't be the real president. How so? Because we rigged it to make sure that he wasn't the right president. How could our rigging fail? 
That's really what it is. They're just mad that their fucking rigging failed. <laughs> but the Dems are not innocent in this either, right? The Democrats are not innocent in it. They, if you if you look at the primary, the last two elections they fucked over Bernie Sanders. The exit polls were way the fuck off. Most countries, if you have a 2% discrepancy in your exit poll, you got to redo the count. And in this election, in the primaries, minimum of 4.8%. Minimum. Minimum. The minimum was twice that of what is acceptable. But no, we're the greatest democracy in the world, right? Our, our election system is bar none. It's the greatest election system. We're the champions of democracy when we can't even get the primaries right. So, election fraud exists, just not in the way that these insurrections, insurrectionists thought of it. But he kept talking about it over and over again. And I guess he lost a book deal. He wrote a book about big tech and uh, big tech censorship or some shit like that. And because he kept suggesting, you know, that, telling people like, oh, yeah, you should go and... And the Electoral College itself is, is problematic all in all. And, and I, I will be honest, I have not done enough research for me to um, for me to talk about the Electoral College in a, 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 a in the right way uh, to articulate exactly what is and isn't wrong with it uh, but that is uh, that is part of my plan you guys I will be I will be doing that it's part of the long list of shit that I want to research and address and talk about it, make a video or talk about it in some way, shape or form. Um, you know, and, and what was happening too was just sort of theater. It wasn't any sort of substantial, meaningful, uh, way to, 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 to say Joe Biden is the president. It's just, it's just a show. It's just a ritual. It's like this empty gesture that they just do because they do. Right. And that's what they went after, which is which is kind of sad that they went after this empty gesture to prove like which also kind of, I think, shows the the level of desperation. And you got to look at you got to look at someone like Holly, who looks at that desperation and is taking advantage of it uh, through and through. Yeah. So Holly gets his book taken off and he's screaming censorship, censorship. Simon and Schuster won't print his book anymore. Uh, they don't want to have anything to do with it. So they're like, we're done. You know what's funny is is uh, public publishers like Simon & Schuster will, will publish books, you know, from warmongers and, and people that decline people health care and all this other shit. And, they'll, and those books will still get published under Simon & Schuster. Uh, it's just when you attack... A symbol, and I'm not. I, this is not an argument to make. Like, oh, what they did was no. I'm not saying the what the what the what happened on January sixth was right. Uh, if you've watched any of the shit that I've done uh, over the last two weeks, then you will know my, where my where I actually stand on that. My point being is, look, I think I think people losing health care, um, and I think uh, people committing war crimes. And, uh, you know, starting wars for profit are equally as bad as these people. Equally as bad as, as, as Josh Hawley saying that, you know, you should storm the Capitol and what you did was right. That's my point. But here's the thing, right? Dude's a Republican, probably champions the free market. Well, great. Simon & Schuster is a private, org a, a private company. They're allowed to decline business from whoever they choose unless you can prove bias in some way, shape, or form. Uh, they, they separated with you for ideological reasons. And, that, and I think that, that's probably fine, right? Within the, within the context of the free market, go to a different publisher. I don't know. I'm sure the publisher, uh, the, the, the publishing company that... that uh, the publishing company that made Mein Kampf is still around. Maybe you can publish your book through them. I don't know. 
but he's going to try to sue them over a, a First Amendment issue. Look, you can also self-publish the book. I made a comic book when I was 15, and I self-published it. Went through Lulu.com. I don't even know if that's a, a real thing now. I know Amazon Web Services took down Parler, but I'm sure if... if uh, <laughs> I'm sure if you go up to Jeff Bezos and you were like, Hey, bro, I'll give you... I'll give you another fucking tax loophole. Not only will you not have to pay it, but Amazon will also just make money every time tax season comes around. I'll do that. If you do that, I bet he'll he'll fucking publish your book. Unapologetically, he'll fucking publish your book. Champion that free market, bitch. Now, here's the thing. With how much he's lined himself up with Trump and galvanized his base, uh, genuinely probably because these people got galvanized and encouraged to be, you know, do all the things that they've been doing, uh, I would wager to bet that this dude is going to run for president in 2024 slash 26. I would wager to bet that this guy is going to be groomed as some sort of presidential candidate for the GOP. And the GOP, once again, will will run on some kind of populist principles. And this guy can probably carry that on. He went to Stanford and Yale. He went to fucking, you know, prep school. He's probably really well connected to a bunch of other shithole billionaires that will do the same thing that they did for Trump, which is fund the campaign and, and be in the shadows and get this dude elected. And whether he wins or not is is very much dependent um, on what happens with the Biden-Harris administration. How they address and talk to rural communities. If if they do the same thing that Claire McCaskill did, then you know that's that's it. You're you're gonna there's gonna be another fucking right-wing populist it's going to be called out. And and again, we'll we'll see neoliberalism give rise to neo-fascism. The pattern that I would I myself and a ton of other people have talked about and addressed that goes ignored by the liberal class. So, you know, that's one of the things that's coming down the pipeline, probably, is, is, is Josh Hawley's going to make some sort of presidential run. And who knows, but based on all this, he might write another book, uh, you know, about his treatment as a conservative and, and say some shit about, you know, oh, the way conservatives are treated, blah, blah, blah. And he can write a, another 250-page book about that. It can be somewhat of a, a, a autobiographical book. And people will eat that shit up. And if he gets a regular spot on Fox... With Donnie T. I think I he'll be set. This is somebody we should probably uh, keep an eye on for a little while. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. 
and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, um, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. You can go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. And I hope to see you at the next video. Thanks again.